Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. This has been one of those weeks where there are so many new AI product announcements that we are actually now days behind on some very, very cool updates. Today, we're going to look at three of the most interesting announcements that weren't OpenAI related, kicking off with Eleven Labs. Now, to understand the context or the opportunity here, I actually want to go back to a tweet from July by Gerard Grigg. Gerard writes, Audible's business model about to be rocked with text-to-voice products. 75% is crazy. He's referring to a post from Reddit where someone learned that Audible charges a 75% commission on audiobooks. Gerard points out a statement from Bezos himself who once said, Your margin is my opportunity. Well, Gerard followed that up this week with a tweet that reads, It was only a matter of time. Eleven Labs took notice. Generate audiobooks in seconds. What it's referring to is that the Eleven Labs Reader app has a new update. It now includes audiobook creation flow for indie authors to directly publish to the app. Basically, if you are an independent author, you can create an audiobook with Eleven Labs now and publish it to their library. The content library now includes those indie authors, but it also includes popular blog posts as well as classic books. On top of all that, they added new AI celebrity voices, and if you were unsure at all around who this was aimed at, head of design Amar Reshi says it's time for a better Audible. One of the things that is happening right now, and I'm sure you guys have noticed this, is there is a ton of discourse around Google's Notebook LM. In fact, we are really overdue for a full episode on Notebook LM, which some like Andre Karpathy have said is maybe the most magical product that they've seen since ChatGPT first came out. A big part of what Notebook LM does is it can take any sort of written or visual material, so a long YouTube video, a boring PDF document, and turn it automatically into an engaging, interesting podcast. It opens up a whole new world of audio consumption that's on demand and really high quality. This 11 Labs update feels like part of the same trend. And if all of these applications retrain people on how they think about audio consumption and frankly probably increase audio consumption, it's going to come with a lot of really cool opportunities. Now, moving on from audio, there was also a video update. Pika Labs has announced Pika 1.5. They say it has more realistic movement, big screen shots, and mind-blowing peak effects that break the laws of physics. And boy, I think more than almost anything else, if you want to see the speed at which AI is improving, just look at video from a year ago compared to video today. Pika is now one of a slew of options, including Runway, Luma Labs, that just have incredible video on demand creation capabilities. Tom's Guide wrote The hyper realistic and physics driven effects are potential game changers for creative professionals who want high quality cinematic style video without the expense of elaborate equipment or an entire production team. Small businesses can potentially create high caliber ads on a budget making Pico 1.5 an affordable way to produce visually stunning promotional videos. Teachers could even use the AI tool to break away from traditional PowerPoints, transforming educational content into engaging visual storytelling. I think what that assessment from Tom's Guide gets at is that we are just scratching the surface on use cases for video. Right now, as is natural, we're going to think about it in terms exclusively of people who are making videos before making videos now. But the real capability and the real transformation power is people who could never have made videos before actually having that medium available to them for all sorts of different use cases, both personal and professional. Third on our list today is an update from Microsoft. Microsoft AI CEO, as well as former Inflection CEO and DeepMind co-founder, Mustafa Suleiman writes, today we're launching our new co-pilot experience. I truly believe we can deliver a calmer, more helpful and supportive era of technology with a co-pilot that is now more intuitive, more personalized, and secure. At Microsoft AI, we are creating an AI companion for everyone. This is the first step. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella quote tweeted that and said, the next phase of co-pilot marks the beginning of a fundamental shift in the way we connect with technology as we give people a more natural, conversational, and personal AI companion. Now you can see here clearly the fingerprints of Mustafa's previous company, Inflection, which remember created a chatbot that was specifically designed to be a companion, not a professional assistant. It seems like some of that energy has now found its way into this Microsoft project. We really are at this amazing kind of transition point. AI companions now see what we see, hear what we hear, and speak in the same language that we use to communicate with one another. And of course, that's more real than ever, because the new version of Microsoft's Copilot has vision and voice capabilities as well. With a similar promise to OpenAI's advanced voice mode, Microsoft's new voice mode can handle interruptions and pauses. Still, at least from Microsoft's perspective, the big emphasis is around the shift in the relationship with the bot. Suleiman said, it's on your team. It's backing you up. It's your hype man. This is a new era of technology that doesn't just solve problems. It's there to support you, teach you, and help you. It will be an advocate for you in many of life's most important moments. It'll accompany you to that doctor's appointment, taking notes and following up at the right time. It'll share the load of planning and preparing for your child's birthday party. And it'll be there at the end of the day to help you think through a tricky life decision. 
There is also another piece of this, which is that Microsoft is also promising deeper reasoning. They're calling it Think Deeper, and it allows the user to instruct Copilot to answer more complex questions using step-by-step -step answers. More controversial is, of course, the Copilot Vision product, which will function somewhat like a slimmed-down version of their Recall product, which is something we've been following since it was announced. Vision will allow the Copilot to see the user's screen and react to things they point to using their cursor. Suleiman gave the example of asking Copilot its opinion on products while shopping online based on reviews sourced from the web. He said, one of the things that seems to be most common is that people ask it for aesthetic advice. They're on a fashion website and they're like, what do you call that pattern? What do you call that dress? While text interactions are stored for 18 months, Vision Mode will delete all interactions at the end of each session. NYU Stern's chief AI architect, Connor Grennan, says, Just got to attend a surprisingly intimate session with Mustafa Suleiman announcing new co-pilot features. Mustafa began by pointing out that we are no longer learning computer languages, they are learning ours, a profound change. As he began to demo new features, he made a point to say that Microsoft interviewed tons of individuals in long form to get a sense of what they wanted. And he came away feeling that people felt overwhelmed, information, social media, hype, FOMO, and that is his North Star in creating the future of AI. Now, I have to admit, from my standpoint, I am, on the one hand, fairly skeptical of this. I fully admit that it could be a failure of imagination and the bias of someone who has spent 40 years living without a digital companion. But for me personally, an emotionally engaged co-pilot is completely disinteresting. But then again, I wasn't interested in Pi either. At the same time, I'm glad that they're taking this swing. There is so much emphasis and push to try to simply create the most frontier model when it comes to professional capabilities that I do think there is space for experimentation in totally new modes of interaction that we can't imagine yet. My kids may think I'm insane and curmudgeonly to have said this by the time they get to their teens and 20s, and this is completely de rigueur. So why not have a company like Microsoft, which already has plenty of investment also in the professional side of the AI transformation, not try something interesting and different? The absolute worst that happens is they spend a bunch of money learning something. And guess what? Microsoft has money to spend. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.